Hi everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Hello. Um, I'm just tired. <laughs> so, uh, we're just gonna switch it up a little bit today and film on the floor. Are you okay? Why are you shaking? What is it? Anyways, uh, I read a buttload this week. I got through quite a few books. Um, I read almost two books every single day, actually. So I got through a ton of my TBR. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit more in detail about some, just because there are so many of them. There are some that I'm just going to say, like, this is what it was, and this is general thoughts. And there's some that I can give, like, a little bit more actual time and information to. But, um, yeah, let's get started. So first off this week, I picked up The Foul Twins by, I found it, it's pronounced Owen, not Yuan, or whatever I was saying, Owen Colfer. Um, so this is the spin-off world to Artemis Fowl. I read Artemis Fowl as a child. I don't know if I finished the whole series or whatever, but I just remember that at the bottom of the pages or whatever, there was like a secret hidden code message or whatever. Me and my friends would spend our recesses trying to decode books. But, um... Yeah, I don't know that I finished it. I had zero recollection of most of it. So I was a little bit unsure if I was how this was going to go. But honestly, I they mention Artemis a little bit. But there's nothing that like wouldn't make sense to the average person who just has a general understanding of what Artemis Fowl as a series was and who the main character was. But it's these twins in the Fowl family who um through a series of events end up getting sort of kind of kidnapped. They're super bright, but they're these twins. They're just like Artemis, but twins. Like, you've got the trouble of, like, them pretending to be each other and just being, like, this dual tag team of Artemis Fowley smart people. So it's really, really interesting and really, really fun. I definitely want to keep reading the rest of this series. It's definitely, I feel like, just, like, the same kind of energy as the Artemis Fowl regular series was. So so I really enjoyed this. I think at the end I gave it a four or five out of five stars. I, I just really enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. Then I picked up my arc of the Silence of Bones by June Her. I was really, really excited about this book. Um, I was lucky enough she was at the conference I went to in January, um, and I have a signed arc, so this is something I'll definitely be keeping. Um, and she's a Canadian Korean author, so we don't have a ton of Canadian authors in general, and even the ones we do, it's predominantly white authors. We don't really have much diversity compared to what our country's demographics are. A great way to start. So it's a debut work. Um, I think the author lives in BC, I want to say. Oh no, sorry, Toronto. So oh, that would make sense as to why she was at the conference then, because the conference was in Toronto. But anyways, so it is set in um, 18, 1800 in uh, Joseon, Korea. Um, so it's really, re it's definitely got a lot of historical elements to it, a lot of um, inbuilt misogyny and sexism towards women, which was never really fun to read. Um, at some points it talks about, like, women get, like, suicide swords just in case they, like, dishonor the family and, like, the family, like, jewels the swords and what. It's just very weird and, like, you shouldn't interact with a man who's not your husband and, like, don't disrespect. Just a lot of, like, inbred sexism that we all were big fans of having in the 1800s, really. Um, but our main character through a series of events is working for the police force and all of a sudden there's a well-known well-to-do woman who is murdered and they need to find out who it is and the person that she's basically sort of under like the partner of they think it might be him so she has to simultaneously prove who it was if it wasn't him there's also someone like kind of going around and causing a bunch of problems is it the same person who did the murder why are they doing the murder and then there's like three lineage reveals in this book and she has her own family issues of her brother is um, they don't know what happened to him. They're assuming he's dead. He's never written back to them. Her sister basically, like, haggled her off for family debts, and her parents just aren't there. So, like, there's a lot of that stuff. But what I was not expecting was the discussion on, um, Catholicism in Korea. Korea is interesting because I feel like it has adopted... I wouldn't say adopt one, but I mean, like, they, they have their own way of, when they adopt something, it's still, they still make it, a, like, it's Korean, it really seems like. Um, but, like, their Catholicism, like, well, Christianity, really, has, has like, kind of has a big foothold, it seems like, in Korea. Um, so they seem to be one of the few Asian countries that, even though they fought, and you can see it in here, they fought this concept of, of Catholicism, of just, just Western stuff in general from coming into the country to the point where they just, like, they literally were murdering people that they were like, oh, they're a Catholic. Uh, we don't want them in our world. Um, so that was really interesting because I, I, I had a little understanding about that they didn't want those sort of ideas there. And then everything with World War 
world wars happen in Korea. But um, it's it was just very, very interesting. I was not expecting that. And I found it really fascinating. I don't think that's something I've really read at all. I, there are a few books, that, very few books that I've even read that are set in Korea, let alone in historical Korea. Um, none of them have really ever tackled this. So I find it really, really interesting. Then I picked up Don't Call the Wolf by Alexander Ross. Now, I'll like totally up front, I think I do want to do a reread of this. My brain, I shouldn't have read this when I did read it. I was just like, I want to read it. But my brain was like, meh, we don't, we don't feel like reading this right now. Okay, I guess we're reading this right now. Um, it wasn't bad by any means, but I don't, like, I literally didn't retain most of it. So I want to give it a reread. But there's like shape-shifting queens and like a demon dragon and like people have been like hidden and they don't know who their parents are and who the queen is in this mythical weird forest and like I just <laughs> I basically remember parts of the ending and like that's all that I like I put it down and I was like cool I couldn't name any of the characters in this entire book <laughs> But even with that being said, I enjoyed it. It was like a three and a half or four out of five stars for me. Um, so I definitely am going to keep the arc of this around when I want to, like a, a fantasy. Like I know that I enjoyed the writing for the most part. So like this is something I'm going to keep kind of just around. So I don't want to, when I finally am like, yeah, it's time. I have it here. Then I read Miraculous by Jess Redman. And I'm really happy that I read this book. Um, so I've mentioned it before in here, but my grandfather passed away really suddenly in February. Um, and he wasn't super old or sick or anything like that. So it, and that's the first person I've ever lost that was super, that I was really, really close to that. I felt that, that like my world kind of just froze. So I think, and then I, when I went to the funeral, like COVID was in Canada and Ontario and Quebec. So it was like, and then everywhere I go, like I've had a bunch of friends, like dogs pass away and ants pass away and just it's it's really and then every time you turn on the news or the internet like there's like oh 25 more people have died it's really hard to grieve right now and like it, I don't know what to do so this was really really like a, a, a book that I appreciated at this time especially right now um our main character is about 10 I think or 11 years old sorry um and he calls himself a uh, miracologist and he keeps this book um and his mother uh had a had a difficult time conceiving him um and then when he's 11 she got lucky again and they after a long long time of trying um had a baby girl and she dies like at eight days old really so the whole family is just just heart heartbroken and the mom's not doing well and he's upset and angry and he keeps talking about this they were gonna put they put her crib in his room to have to have them sleep together and so he, she's gone but he keeps going he doesn't want to go back to his room because the crib's still in there and it, it's just little pieces of that and him trying to like put himself back together and finding out what he is after that what's the long-term impacts of that how his parents are gonna do they so desperate this wasn't like a case of child neglect or anything like that they had so desperately wanted another child for 10 years and they finally got one and it was just gone like that so this is a book that I, I definitely could appreciate right now and he he goes he does he the kid's like a really good person like he's a really good kind-hearted person and he wants he you know he's trying to grieve and get his life back together which is I'm 28 and I'm not even doing that I don't know how the hell an 11 year old is supposed to do that like I just yeah I also picked up A Ghost Squad by Clarabelle Ortega and she's coming to the TBR and Beyond group this month. This was one of our group reads for the month. It was so much fun. Uh, it was like a haunted mansion tour guide and um, the main character is like her dad having a hard time financially keeping things afloat and things are just going back to worse. And then like her, the spirits in her yard or whatever, um, they're... It, things happen and they have to figure out why those things are happening and it's a really entertaining and fun book I really enjoyed it I yeah I'm I'm really excited for um for her to come and to see what else she puts out this would be um this is just a fun read this would definitely be a really good one to read around Halloween though especially I'm gonna keep it around actually I think I'm rereading Halloween I keep saying that about so many books why my October TBR is going to be ginormous then I did a reread of The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding. And then I did a read of The Last Life of Prince Alistair. And this is a series where I'm like legit, I don't know which book I like more. And like the audiobooks. If you're going to read these books, please listen along to the audiobooks. The audiobooks are el elevate the actual content so damn much, especially with so there's so much comedic tone and energy. And you do not understand 
how funny Prince Alistair is until you hear his shrieking voice on the audio book. It's so freaking funny. But we go, we're going, um, <laughs> Prince Alistair wants his, wants his power and his control back after everything that happened. Um, after all the effort he put in, into the first book of getting back his power control, we go to, like, his world. And, I mean, it's just absolute chaos. <laughs> I mean, the portal to get there, he puts it in an outhouse. So, like, the guy's body that he's inhabiting, Prosper, he gets put in an outhouse to enter this. It's just, oh, uh, it's so, uh, I just... I just love Prince Alistair so much as a character and he's just so it's so entertaining to watch him in this book especially so I I legit don't know which book I liked more but they're so freaking good so good this is just I'm I'm definitely I, I read The Darkest Minds I think it is the first book and I actually watched the first movie I didn't I actually kind of enjoyed it um but I'm gonna watch to see what else she puts out um I wasn't super impressed with the darkest minds necessarily but like this series then i read the jumbies by tracy batiste i've had this book for a little while now here so i'm really excited i finally read it it is set i think it's in the dominican republic i should have written it down when i was reading i was like oh okay um but our there's this like this spirit i guess i don't know if, i guess that's the right word um jumbie kind of wreaking havoc and then there's a big lineage reveal i'm a sucker for lineage reveals it seems um but i really liked the setting i liked all the characters I feel like it was quite, like, I, I never had any questions about, like, what exactly can they, can they, they, they do? Like, it's not, like, it doesn't, it's not very, like, info droppy and it's not super long, but I feel like I had a really great understanding and grasp of what the, the limitations were in this world, even though it's not a giant book with a ton of world building or anything like that. But I felt like I had a great understanding of what was possible and what was not possible, which I feel like it's something that a lot of authors struggle with. So I, I especially, especially love that. And I'm definitely going to read the next one whenever I find it. I don't have the physical book, but I think my library has a digital copy. I have to double check. Um, but I know there's two more. So I'm definitely, definitely curious. I love this cover too. Just, I freaking love this. Yeah, but our main character is going to like save her dad and like battle the jumpies. And yeah, it's really good. So this is actually one of my two favorite reads of the week. Um, the Shrunken Head by Lauren Oliver. I freaking loved this book so much. There's so much more murder in here than I ever remember reading in middle grade. <laughs> um, this is a weird messed up book, but it's so good. Um, so it starts off with like, oh, a bunch of people keep getting murdered throughout this whole thing. And it starts off with a murder. So these kids, uh, work in this, it's called a museum, but it's basically like a, a circus that just doesn't travel. Um, but the circus is, is struggling financially right now um so he gets a shrunken head the man running he gets a shrunken head to try and like drum up um you know people coming in and attendance and everything and more money um and then like things go missing a bunch of people die and the kids are trying to track down exactly who's doing it is this all connected what is it connected to where is the shrunken head and what happened and then there's this like nosy little woman who's like i'm going to save you four children and they're like bitch fuck off we don't need saving how we're looking for these people stop we gotta like we're we're safe stop the shenanigans and you know it's, there's a Karen basically um but I loved this book so freaking much it was so good I loved the characters it's very feeling of like you make a family blood family isn't everything there's a little bit of like a scientist experiment kind of thrown in here um so it's just it's really fun it was really fun and like very fast paced actually I feel like this is probably one of the bigger middle grade books that I've read this month and um I feel like it was the study. I don't, I don't remember feeling any like drags or anything like that. And even I was guessing for like the majority of the book, I'm like, who, who actually did that? Like what? Who? Uh, and I was expecting it to be like people going missing and they find them in the end. No, no, no. People just dead ass get murdered <laughs> in this book. Then I picked up Storm Runner by J.C. Cervantes. This is from the Rick Riordan imprint. It's Mayan God set in New Mexico. Um, despite it being Rick Riordan imprint. I, that's it. I didn't hate it. I was on the fence about it because I know some people had had some issues with the um, main character has a limp because one of his legs is actually like not the same height as the other leg. Um, and they don't know why. And it's a big part of the story and they kind of find out why. Um, so I was confused why people had an issue with that having read it now. I feel like we idolize Percy Jackson a lot because, oh my god, it's a main character with dyslexia, and it's like a superpower, like, it's, it's, 
it, it is, it's explained why he has it and it's like oh he's actually just like this like other like all these other things and like I feel like the same setup is given here that the main character has a limp and it is explained why um and so I but I feel like this we praised the one for the Percy Jackson rep but then people had issue with it in the Starburner rep so I don't I don't quite understand um why it's different what I, I can't speak to it I'm not physically disabled I don't have dyslexia so like I just I I, I that was I was quite hesitant going in but I didn't see any issues with that um but other than that like the book just it felt kind of flat for me unfortunately um I don't know why my voice just went to that that pitch but I I it just felt like I didn't connect to any part of it any of it um and I don't know if it's just me versus like the the writing style and all that stuff but I just felt my brain drifting off an awful lot consistently and I was like wait there's three books of this like feeling already kind of exhausted about it so I'm not gonna read the firekeeper um I I read the first one it's just not for me I can't like everything that comes out Sorry, it kicked the camera over. Um, but yeah, um, the Rick Roy Orton imprint gets enough of my money as it is, and I bought all of the ebooks and audiobooks for my libraries on top of that. So, um, yes, he already got my money really out of this whole thing. Um, but yeah, so I would be interested if you do have um any sort of like um physical disability, the proper term anymore, actually, just having just something about your body that's different, like a limp or something like that. Um, but I'd be interested to know what their perspective is on this. And lastly, this week, I read, uh, I think lastly, I think, yes. Uh, and lastly, this week, I read You Deserve Each Other by Sarah something. I don't have the book in front of me. I was waiting. My physical copy is on its way to me. It's in the mail. It's been in the mail for two and a half weeks now or so. Um, Canada Post just isn't moving shit, it seems. So, um, and then uh, I had the audiobook through my library and there were eight people in line behind me. And I felt bad that it was just sitting there and I really wanted to read it so I did and bitch I'm so sad so happy I did so happy I did this is my other favorite book of this week if you cannot tell um our main character starts off at like on her second date with this guy she's like oh my god like I'm really excited oh my god he's unwrapping me ah we're gonna kiss awesome yeah and then it flash forwards to like two years later and they're engaged and they detest each other <laughs> And it's explained in the book, but basically they're playing a giant game of chicken to see who will call off the wedding first because they don't want to pay, right? So if he cancels the wedding, she's like, Scott free, awesome. I don't have to worry about it. His mom through, you'll read more about that. But like his mom's the one who's basically out of her demands organizing the wedding um, for, for, for Naomi. And uh, Naomi's just kind of done with it. And He's just, Nick's just a pushover. Oh, God. He's just so, I think his name's Nick, right? I think it's Naomi and Nick. Um, yeah. And so they, they're playing a giant game of chicken to how can we piss off the other person more and make their life a more living hell so they're the one to cancel it. So, A, I can get the pity, but also I don't have to deal with the cost of canceling a wedding, like, four months before it. So it's this whole th Oh, my God. There's this scene... Oh, where Naomi is, she's like, oh, I know how to piss him off. His mother, he has a weird relationship with his mother. It's very like, like, like she can't, the mother doesn't know boundaries, right? And the dialogue and the tension and the tone, I cackled out loud so many times. But honestly, my brain was just imagining Lorelai Gilmore and Emily Gilmore having a discussion. And that was the only way I can explain that, the, the interactions between them. And then we go through this process of, it, he he makes a large purchase um, in this game of chicken, and I think that part is like a big turning point for them. So we we meet them of like, okay, are they going to start falling back in love, and what does that look like? Because they are different people, and they they got engaged like pretty quickly on like before maybe they knew each other. Do they know each other really now? And then the main character Naomi, um, there's this com co conflict of. She doesn't have a college diploma. They live in this kind of dying small town. Um, and he's a dentist. So he's, he's you know, he's, he's got a solid, stable income. And everywhere she's working, keeps going out of business pretty quickly. So she's constantly having this, um, you know, inability to find stable income because the town is just dying. And so she's struggling with, like, being completely essentially financially dependent on this person and 
want it what does she want in her life and she kind of feels rejected an awful lot so she's unemployed for a lot of this book and it's, it's so I mean there's a lot of power imbalances which was really interesting to watch but I really loved this book I loved the conflicts and the bantering and the bickering and the fighting um and I but I loved how it how it ended up and wrapped up and I, that just it was what I needed for sure and I'm really happy I own the copy so whenever it freaking gets here I'm probably gonna read it again this summer so oh, those are the books that I read this week. Like I said, The Shrunken Head and You Deserve Each Other were easily my favorites of the month uh, or of this week. I was, I've been like kind of craving something like a, a fun romance, um, but I really hadn't, I, everything that's been kind of coming out, I'm like, eh, I just don't feel like that's going to be anything for me. Because I was waiting for Helen Huang's third book to come out, The Heart Principle, but that got pushed by a year. So I was just like, what, what is 2020 then? Like, it's already a shit year, but then you're taking away Helen Wong's book? Like, what do, what do I do? That was my, my summer thing. And now I, I gotta wait a few more months still until Sex and Vanity comes out from Kevin Kwan. So like, wh what do I gotta do? And I just saw a bunch of people like five star this and be like, the banter. And I was like, okay, okay, I give this a go. And there was like a 10 times the plum point sale on Indigo. So I bought it and I was like, oh, cool. And it was really good. <laughs> so those are the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read this week, what your thoughts were on those. If you've read any of these, what your thoughts were on those. And um, stay the fuck inside. And uh, yeah, stay inside. Stay safe. Stay clean. Um, don't be a dumbass. Okay? We just really need everyone to do that right now. Because honestly, I don't know who's playing, who's the game master in all this. But they've released the Tracker Jacker, Murder Hornets, whatever you want to call them. So I'm just exhausted and I need y'all to stop being stupid. Though I am team praying mantis. I saw a video on Twitter of a praying mantis eating a murder hornet, which was... The internet's been weird this week.